Bob. Oh, wonderful. Thank you so much, Sean. And thank mm -hmm. you, everybody, for coming to uh, my presentation. My name is Chen. I'm from uh, the Natural Langu Language Processing Lab uh, at uh, the Computational Health Informatics Program at Boston Children's Hospital. Mm -hmm. And today, we go we're going to show you how we customize CTEX uh, for identifying adverse drug events uh, from the clinical notes in uh, pediatric pulmonary hypertension patients. Thank you, Sean. Next slide. So here we see uh, two sample paragraphs uh, from the clinical notes. In those two paragraphs, we have uh, two instances of the same uh, adverse drug events near Singapore. And we also highlighted uh, the related uh, medications uh, in uh, blue. Uh, so we can see in this uh, clinical text, we not only have uh, medications uh, and adverse events, we also have other text, other noisy data, also other uh, mentions of medication, other mentions of uh, adverse events. Uh, how to uh, our goal is to identify. Uh, so in the next slides, um, we want to identify all those related uh, pulmonary hypertension medications. We want to identify also the adverse drug events. Then we need to associate them together with some rules. Uh, thank you, Sean. Uh, so the data set we are working with uh, is a PPH cohort from our hospital. It has uh, 984 patients. And also for those patients, we have uh, 150K uh, nodes. Uh, the first step is to identify all those medications and adverse drug events. Uh, so we will talk it in detail. Uh, next slide, please. Uh, so first of all, we are interested in uh, in those medications such as cytinophil, tadalafil, etc. And for the adverse drug events, we are interested in rush, flashing, headache, diarrhea, etc. Uh, the next slides will show, show us some of the synonyms. Uh, of course, some of drug may have their brand name and the drug names. So there are a lot of uh, synonyms. Uh, so as you can see, our goal is to identify all those uh, uh, terms in the medical documents, uh, as well as their synonyms. Uh, how are we gonna do it? We're gonna do it through uh, the CTEX dictionary lookup. So first of all, of all, we need to build a customized dictionary for this task. Uh, so we have uh, three steps to build up this uh, dictionary. Uh, so Sean yesterday introduced uh, some new method. So this project was about uh, two years old. So we use some old way to build the dictionary. Uh, so first, we added a dictionary file uh, using this uh, pipe uh, separated format. So QI first, then TUI, then the term itself. And once we build this uh, uh, text-based dictionary file, we can put it under the resources folder of CTEX. And then we can modify an XML file to let the system know where to look for uh, this dictionary file. And on the next slides, we show how we can modify this uh, XMI, XML file in three steps. Uh, in the XML file, we first need to build, a, build up this dictionary. Uh, we call it a PH custom dictionary. And in the property key, uh, we specify where to look for the dictionary file. The next step, uh, Next slide, please, uh, is to build a concept factory in the XML file. We name it PH custom concept. And also in the property key, we also need to specify where the dictionary is. Uh, the next step would be uh, uh, associate the concept factory uh, to the dictionary file in this uh, uh, XML lines. So in this way, we can let the system know where to find the dictionary file. And in those dictionary files, we list all those interested terms uh, we want to extract from our clinical documents. Uh, next slide, please. Uh, so uh, with the dictionary lookup, uh, so we, we can now, let's say we can now find all the terms in the clinical documents. The next step was, uh, is to associate all those medications with adverse drug events. 
with our handcraft rules. Thank you, Sean. And to develop the rule, we uh, have 100 plus nodes uh, for developing the rules. The international uh, inter annotator agreement for the gold standard annotation uh, is about 88%. And once we uh, settle on the rules, we can apply for the rest 150K nodes. Um, thank you, next slides. Uh, so uh, first thing is that uh, uh, for some of the adverse events, uh, they are known to be associated uh, with all the pulmonary hypertension drugs. But some of the other adverse drug events are only associated with uh, certain medications. Uh, for example, for Caesar, uh, the physician only interested in uh, sildenafil and teladafil. Uh, same case for John Ball and uh, edema. <clears throat> uh, so, so this is our starting point. We need, we need to carve the rule so that some of the adverse events is associated with all the medications. Some of all them are not. And then, uh, so we have laid out these uh, four categories of general rules. The first thing is called negation. So of course, uh, some of the term is mentioned, but, but it's in the negated form, such as the patient doesn't have fever. So the fever doesn't happen, so it's not be, should be counted on. Another uh, thing is called a condition. And so mo many of the times the patient and the physician are just discussing the possibility of using a drug. So in this sense, the drug should not be taken into consideration as well. Uh, so it's called conditional. Uh, the third rule is called proximity. Uh, as you can see, if some uh, medication is mentioned at the beginning of the document, uh, well, the adverse drug events is at the end of the document, they are too far away. Uh, so uh, they should, should not be linked together. Uh, the fourth point is uh, called temporality, a very uh, important fact in this project. Uh, we, as we can see in this example, many of the medication or the adverse drug events is mentioned in the future tense. So the patient will switch to a drug. So the, currently the patient is not on the drug. So we should not take into consideration in the adverse drug events relation. Uh, so these are our four points. Uh, <clears throat> in order to pick up the tense information uh, for our medication or adverse drug events, we resort to CTEX temporal module. Uh, to be specific, we use the Doc Tamrel model for this task. Doc Tamrel model stands for document creation time relation. It link every uh, event like uh, medication or adverse drug event. Uh, link that event uh, uh, re uh, as regard to the document creation time. So uh, the X axis, axis shows the patient timeline. At a certain point of the timeline, a document was written at the document creation time. And based on the tense of the local system, uh, sentence, we can tell whether an event is happened in the future, such as the future tense, the patient will return tomorrow. So return happened after the document creation time. It's a future tense. And uh, the doc, doc time real value is after for return. Uh, so uh, the present tense has a fever will signal uh, overlap relation to the document creation time. Uh, the past tense, the surgery went well, uh, signals uh, before relation uh, to the document creation time. There's also a special case called before and overlap Often time is signaled by the present perfect tense has had a fever. It means this event happened before the DCT, but continues through the present. Uh, so uh, using doc time real model, we can roughly put every uh, events in our interest into rough temporal bin so that we can filter them. Uh, thank you. This slide shows all the detailed rules. Uh, the first rule would be negation. So neither the drug or the adverse event should be negated on. That's the first rule. The second rule is the condition. Uh, so neither the drug or the adverse event should be generic. They should not be in discussion. They should not be potential. Uh, they should be actually administered on drugs. 
and the proximity we require the drug and adverse event happen within four sentences apart, or they should be in the same paragraph. Uh, temporality for adverse events and uh, medication are a little bit different. So for adverse event require the uh, dog time real value to be before and or after, <clears throat> not, should not be before or after, only the present tense, only the overlap and the before and overlap case uh, can make the adverse events uh, valid. And for medications, we only require it to be after. Uh, the, the reason is that many times a drug is mentioned in the past tense, but it oftentimes means the drug is currently administered. So the patient uh, uh, start the drug two weeks ago, uh, so which means uh, this patient may, may still using the drug. <clears throat> And for adverse event, it's another case. Uh, so if a patient have a fever two weeks ago, uh, that doesn't uh, mean he has a fever right now. Uh, so we only have the present uh, adverse events. <clears throat> uh, thank you, Sean. We can go to the next slide. Uh, so uh, those are our general rules. Uh, through error analysis, we also carved some uh, uh, detailed rules as these uh, slides uh, present. Uh, some of the uh, rules are uh, very clinical. Uh, only the physician understand. Uh, I still don't understand. Uh, and some of, uh, of the rules are only fit to our data, uh, such as uh, uh, some of uh, the medication is mentioned, but there is a changed word in, in the close vicinity, which means this medication is changed. Uh, so we don't take it into consideration. <clears throat> Uh, uh, we can leave all the questions to the end, uh, uh, so we can go to the next slides, maybe. Uh, thank you, Sean. So as we can see, we pick up all the uh, medications and uh, adverse drug events, but there are multiple mentions. To link them one by one, it will be very tedious. Uh, so we think it should be better to uh, do it as a document level summarization. So in the document level, we summarize all the uh, unique pairs of uh, medication and adverse events. Uh, and we evaluate on the document level, not the instance level. In this way, we can clean up the data and make more accurate uh, prediction. Uh, so, and we de develop the model on the 100 plus nodes. And uh, once the rule is satisfying, we will apply the rule on the rest 150K nodes. Uh, on the next slides, we can see the model performance on the 100 plus uh, development set. So the training set have a F1 score of 80%. On the development set and test set, uh, we have a, a F1 score uh, of more than 78%. And our collaborating uh, physician think this is a very good model. <clears throat> and so we go ahead and apply this model on the rest 150K uh, nodes. And here are what we find. So if a, a patient, pulmonary hypertension patient, only take one medication, so 86% of the chance it will experience, he, will, he or she will experience at least one adverse drug event. And if a patient is taken two or more, medications, and then 96% of the chance um, the patient will experience at least one adverse drug event. And among children, the most common <clears throat> adverse drug events includes uh, reflux, diarrhea, <clears throat> rushing, flushing, hypertension, etc. Uh, in all, uh, using our um, CTX-based method, uh, we find seven up to seven fold higher prevalence for ADEs than diagnostic codes. Uh, so CTEX really help us find more information. Uh, here is a visualization of all the adverse drug events per medication. Uh, the vertical axis shows the percentage of patients. The X axis uh, lists all the adverse drug events and the color coded uh, all those medications. Uh, for example, let's say the tallest uh, red bar 
uh, on the left hand side, uh, is the medication is uh, uh, um, benzentin, um, RB centen, and uh, we can see for this drug about uh, more than sixty percent of the patient may have uh, um, may have this uh, um, adverse drug events. Uh, edema, and for the orange bar on the left, uh, it's a says sildenafil. So if a patient is on sildenafil, and uh, more than uh, fifty percent of the patient may experience diarrhea. So this way we can understand all those uh, uh, adverse drug events. Uh, next slide, please. And for detailed uh, details, uh, we can resort to this publication, uh, which just came out uh, this year. Um, uh, next slide would show us um, our future work. Yes, uh, we want to determine the causal, causal relation between drugs and uh, clinical events in order to differentiate comorbidities from adverse drug events. Uh, the next thing is that uh, this is a rule-based system. We always want to do it uh, in machine learning way uh, so that the model can be more robust uh, and uh, portable. Uh, so in, in order to be portable, we're also uh, studying on domain adaptation methods so that uh, the algorithm de developed at our hospital uh, can be used in other hospital, other institutes uh, as well. Uh, this is our funding sources, and my name is Chen. Uh, and I'd be open to the questions. Thank you, Chen. Thank you, Sean. Mm -hmm. I will leave the uh, slides. Let's see. Okay. Can everyone see the slides at least in a minimized window? Uh, <clears throat> okay, so we do have some questions lined up here. Yeah, if I may, I can ans uh, answer Peter's question. Uh, so the question is, will these uh, filtration rules apply during the concept extraction process or post CTEX in some downstreaming functionality looking at the full extracted data? Uh, so this filtration, the filtration uh, rules are applied after the CTEX uh, did the processing, did the um, uh, terms extraction. And uh, ex uh, they, the CTEX will extract all the terms and store every information into uh, XMI files. So we did some post-processing uh, to filter all those terms, apply those rules. Um, uh, I hope I uh, answered this question. Uh, Yes, yeah, so I just to add a little more information, uh, the post processing filtration used uh, for the most part the semantic type or TUI that came along with the medication. Uh, and I think, Chen, in, in an earlier slide, you did have a few specific uh, medications that were filtered out by name. So those were also used. Yeah, and, yeah. yeah, and another rule that was applied in general uh, was the existence within Rx norm code instead of just, for instance, a SNOMED CT code. Well, wonderful, thank you, Sean, for the, uh, uh, for the, for the explanation. <laughs> no problem. Uh, if I may, I, I... <laughs> I found Thomas' question. Uh, so, uh, what sentence splitter did you use in CTEX? Um, uh, this is a very good question. People may thought, may think that uh, sentence detection is a solved problem, uh, but however, many of our errors are coming from sentence uh, detection. Um, so, we tried the default uh, CTEX sentence detector. Uh, but it given, didn't uh, have a very good results. Uh, later on, we tried uh, uh, a syn sentence detector developed by uh, Tim Timothy Miller. Um, 
uh, maybe Tim can uh, chime in for more details about his uh, uh, sentence detector. And uh, it's uh, performed very well. Uh, and we uh, we we use it for a lot of downstreaming uh, process. Yeah, it's called uh, the sentence detector, BIO, te uh, BIO detector. Oh, how did I write engine implement the rule? Um, uh, ju just a bunch of if else uh, statements uh, will make the rule uh, in uh, after processing C uh, consuming C takes as XMI files. Uh, uh, is it helpful? Thank you. Um, Uh, so uh, if I may, I can take the chance to uh, thank our uh, lead developer, Sean. Uh, in every project, uh, Sean is my uh, last resort. If I have any problem, any issue, I always find Sean for solution, for help. And uh, uh, he really know everything about CTEX. Notice that he said last resort. Uh, so sometimes I try to figure it out myself, uh, but uh, I fail many of the times. I was just kidding. Thank you, Jen, for the mention. That was very kind of you. All right. And Timothy Miller really developed many uh, annotators in CTEX. Maybe Tim can talk about something about uh, his uh, awesome uh, sentence detector. Hmm. I don't know how we would add him as a speaker, <clears throat> but Tim, if you want to add anything to the chat, that would be great. Uh, thank you, Peter, for uh, recognizing we are uh, we using the temporal attributes. Uh, we not only use temporal attributes in this project, uh, but also in some other uh, temporal sensitive uh, projects as well. Uh, it's really helpful, and uh, the original. Doc time rail model is developed uh, multiple years ago, but it's still working right now. Uh, it's uh, based on support vector machine. Uh, right now, we are still uh, we are trying to do some uh, machine learning based models uh, to do te temporal uh, uh, recognition. Uh, thank you, Gorgana, for posting that uh, Dr. Rao paper. Detector does. Uh... Yeah. 
Yes, um, <clears throat> one of the, the biggest contribution of team sentence detector is that he fix uh, the the uh, the sent uh, the new line character. So oftentimes, uh, the sentence will uh, the the system will think it's a new sentence once they see a new line character. Uh, but most of the time, uh, the in the clinical documents, they are not the case. So Tim's sentence detector uh, fix that issue. All right, thank you, Tim, for uh, explaining the sentence detector so well. Uh, we surely understand that nothing is perfect, and Tim's uh, solution is already good enough for all, a lot of downstreaming tasks. Yes, and I think I should point out uh, CTAKES being modular and lots of different annotators being present for it, uh, et cetera, et cetera. Tim's, your last comment on missing sentence breaks, there are other annotators that you can throw into the pipeline after the sentence detector that will try to amend the mistake. So C takes, you know, the, it's not reliance only on the sentence detector, it's a larger system. So, um, you know, just having a sentence detector that's not absolutely perfect doesn't necessarily make the system itself problematic, I will say. No, exactly. Uh, so for this uh, task, we're only uh, interested in the medication mentions or the adverse drug event mentions. Uh, even if it's not in the same sentence, it's okay. Okay, so uh, we do have a few minutes left, but uh, before the time runs out, I'm just going to add anything that you think of after this time period. Uh, we can you can write uh, the dev list and you know possibly the user list, and we can always try to answer questions later on outside this venue. Okay, which modules perform best and worst? Chen, I think that might be for you. Uh, uh, um, you, you mean on this uh, pulmonary hypertension data source? Uh, 
Okay, uh, so first of all, your sentence detector definitely works well. Um, uh, negation, negation module doesn't work that well. Uh, so we have to have extra rules uh, to uh, detect certain uh, negated terms. Um, the doc turn rel value, uh, the, the doc turn rel module still works uh, pretty good and uh, we can rely on it to detect the temporality. Um, the, the the generic uh, module also uh, didn't perform uh, very well, so we have to uh, devise some uh, handcraft rules to detect some uh, generic uh, cases. Uh, as I said, uh, we tried polarity annotator and uh, it doesn't annotate uh, all these negated uh, cases. Uh, so we tried the neg neg negax. We did try negax. Yeah, it was a combination of both. Right, Jen? Yeah, we tried negax together with some other handcraft rules. Very good question. Ah, very good question. Uh, the negation detect detector may not work so well. Is there any plan to improve the uh, machine learning negation detection module in CTEX? Uh, we are working uh, uh, behind the scene uh, to develop some uh, uh, machine learning, uh, deep learning models uh, for negation. Uh, we have some new results and published uh, somewhere. Um, I can try to dig in the paper for you. Uh, but we may think about how to um, bridge the deep learning uh, code together with CTEX as the majority of the deep learning stuff is done by Python. Um, that's a bridging uh, question. Maybe uh, uh, <clears throat> maybe uh, Sean can chime in. Sure. Uh, okay, so I think the second to last presentation tomorrow, right before uh, Peter Abramovich, will be... Uh, short, it'll be about 10 minutes, but it will uh, be a general overview of how one of our colleagues did manage to put together uh, CTAKES and the Python pipeline um, to, as Chen said, combine the deep learning with uh, what you can get out of CTAKES as it is. In short, I guess I'll just give you a sneak peek. There's a library named Cassis or Cassis, depending on uh, what you like on your dessert. And it allows the XMI that represents the JCAS, uh, the XML file, to be read in Python. Um, th thank you. Yeah, as Peter pointed out, there are several options to run neural models in Java. Uh, also, as Tim again writes some uh, uh, wrapper around uh, uh, our Py uh, Java code to uh, bridge into uh, Python. <clears throat> I'm trying to dig up uh, some of our negation related publication. Uh, I was trying to do the same thing. I found uh, the 2014 by Steve Wu and Tim, but I couldn't find anything else right away. 
Oh, uh, we uh, so Tim, did you remember our uh, domain adaptation work on the negation thing? Uh, Okay, let me see if I can find it again. Actually, here's Oh yes, uh, Tim, do you remember um, our uh, domain adaptation work on the negation data? Uh, I, I was trying to dig up a reference uh, to our newest work on the negation. And yeah, I think that's the first link I put in the chat. Oh, wonderful, thank you. And the second one is the negation is not solved. Wonderful. Okay, well, this is officially time, but um, I don't think anyone should feel compelled to jump ship right now. But if you do, uh, please show up again tomorrow. We have uh, three really, well, actually four, I suppose, really good uh, presentations. And that is the last day. So you have no excuse for, you know, saving your time for another. Thank you so much all for coming. Uh, thank you, Sean, for your wonderful work. <laughs> thank you. It was a very good presentation. All, all right, everybody have a wonderful day. Yeah, I think uh, attendance is slowly dwindling, so we can call it an end. Wonderful. All right. Thank Thanks you. all. Uh, hope to see you again tomorrow.